During his stay, Zhou Daguan had several audiences with the ruling king. Every time I was admitted to the palace for an audience with the king, he came forward with his chief wife and took his place in the embrasure of the golden window in the main audience hall. Zhou himself came from a culture with a ruler elevated to godhood. The Chinese approved of the Khmer's devotion. These people know what is due a king. The king topped a social pyramid that stretched down to the lowest peasant. The monarch's potency showed itself in a legend Zhou Daguan relates. Out of the palace rises a golden tower, to the top of which the ruler ascends nightly to sleep. It is common belief that in the tower dwells a genie, formed like a serpent with nine heads, which is lord of the entire kingdom. Every night, the genie appears in the shape of a woman with whom the sovereign couples. Should the genie fail to appear for a single night, it is a sign that the king's death is at hand. If the king should fail to keep his tryst, disaster is sure to follow. Well, I'm not sure about that. He would have been a fine king had he been able to do that uh, for any length of time. But, uh, but what we do know is that it was a, a, a practice of the aristocrats to send, uh, and, and the, the regional uh, landed gentry, as it were, to send up a, a woman from their family uh, to be a member of the king's um, entourage, to become a concubine, which would, in a sense, bind the provinces to the centre in a very physical manner. And it wouldn't be surprising if, indeed, the king did have a very substantial harem uh, from which to choose. Zhou Daguan notes that the king had five wives and a harem of 3,000 women. The king was rarely seen outside the palace, but Zhou describes one such occasion, the New Year festival. As night comes on, the king is besought to take part in the spectacle. The rockets are fired and the crackers touched off. The rockets can be seen from 13 kilometers away. The firecrackers, large as swivel guns, shake the whole city. Below the king was an army of bureaucrats graded by rank, as Zhou describes. In this country, there is a hierarchy of ministers, generals, astronomers and other functionaries. Beneath these come all sorts of small employees, differing only in name from our own. These would all have been descendants of families honoured by the original Jayavarman, who had founded Angkor 500 years earlier. What is not clear from Zhou's writings is how many people lived in Angkor. Sanskrit inscriptions in temples such as Ta Prom offer valuable clues. We know that the temple housed at least 12,000 people, including uh, a number of great priests, I think over 650 dancers and various uh, other officiants uh, to maintain the, the temple and to do the necessary uh, temple duties. If 12,000 people served a single temple, what was the overall population? Jacques Gaucher's new research is not yet complete, but it does support an educated guess. To give a number, this city could have been between 80,000, 90,000 and 150,000 people. In the same period, the population of London totaled no more than 30,000. So, discoveries are confirming that what Henri Muo suspected, and Zhou Daguan alleges, is correct. Angkor Tom was, indeed, a large, well-structured city with a huge population. Now, suspicions are aroused that the jungle conceals an altogether bigger surprise. A metropolis so vast that its full extent can only be detected from space.
The search for the hidden empire of Angkor was about to take an unexpected turn. In 1994, archaeologists persuaded NASA to undertake a unique task. The space agency had developed specialist radar to penetrate vegetation. Their challenge was to probe the area of Angkor in Cambodia as the space shuttle Endeavour passed over Southeast Asia. The resulting images cover an area 100 kilometers long and 10 kilometers wide. For the first time, scientists have an accurate impression of the wider city's infrastructure a thousand years ago. Covering an area the size of London, this rural metropolis was immense. For archaeologist Elizabeth Moore, this is a major breakthrough. Up into this central statue. I'm sure they had the skill to do it, don't you? It is revolutionizing understanding of the size of the kingdom. Forced water up. And at first people said, well, you won't find anything new at Angkor, but, but we have. And what the radar has shown us is just how all the regions contributed to what then became the central zone of Angkor. The radar pictures also reveal previously unknown temples all over the Angkorian basin, as well as an intricate network of roads and canals, all leading to the walled city. Evident for the first time is the grid plan of this once great metropolis. When you start looking at the radar imagery and you see that sophistication with which they were able to control and alter their terrain. I've never seen a culture like it elsewhere in Southeast Asia in terms of manipulating the landscape, of using it to their benefit. Now the challenge for archaeologists was to work out at ground level what had been photographed from space. Archaeologist Christophe Potier is using the images as a route map to trace the layout of ancient Angkor. The newly discovered temples were at the center of their own communities. Just like village churches in Europe, they indicate the size of each settlement, showing the true extent of the metropolis. Today, Potier and his Cambodian assistant, Sin Chenda, attempt to locate a number of previously unrecorded ruins outside the walled city of Angkor Thom. Wow, super. <laughs> it's a, no, it's a quite nice one. Well, it seems to be a Garuda. You can uh, see very clearly uh, the Garuda with his wings is like an eagle. And uh, quite interesting. Unfortunately, it has been uh, badly damaged, but, uh, but it's nice. And uh, compared to the, the style, it could be a uh, uh, late 9th century. Maybe, maybe first part of the 10th. Temples like this would have been the centers of villages housing between one and 300 people. Potier and his colleagues have established that the number of temple sites like this in the region runs into thousands, suggesting a massive population. There was a direct relationship between these villages and the royal capital. An ancient inscription persuades archaeologists like Charles Hyam of the Link. We know that at least um, 80,000 or so people from 3,000 villages were assigned to supply all the goods that we needed annually uh, to, to maintain it in, 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 a, in a good condition. 